para su guayo mamá queña. Hello, my name is Sara Alvarez and I'm with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. Today we continue our celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month by doing an activity that connects us with Latin Caribbean culture, specifically the island of Puerto Rico. We will be doing a Bejigante mask. These took inspiration from nature, donning grand horns and bird or bat-like costumes. Bejigante traditional colors include red, yellow, green, and black. The mask could be made out of coconuts or paper mache. Bejigantes represented the fight between good and evil. The masks are a confluence of three cultures, Spanish, African, and Native. As Native and African slaves adapted Spanish Catholic icons into their culture. To make your very own Bejigante mask, you will need a poster board, scissors, a pencil, tape, a mixing bowl and a mixing utensil, all-purpose flour, some newspaper, tissue paper, brown paper, or even construction paper works for paper mache, and some acrylic paints in traditional colors like green, yellow, red, and black, or whichever colors you might prefer. To start, take your poster board and cut it in half. Then use your mixing bowl or a round paper plate to trace the shape of a circle on your poster board. Cut your circle out. Next, we will be cutting three segments into our circle as shown here. After you finish cutting, we're going to overlap each segment of the circle and secure it using tape so that it forms a conical shape. Now we're starting the paper mache process. In a mixing bowl, add one cup of water to one and a half cup of warm water. Pour your water in slowly. You might end up not using the full one and a half cup of water. Mix thoroughly until you have a liquid glue-like consistency. Cover your area appropriately as the paper mache mixture can stain your area and yourself. Cut your newspaper into strips or tear away chunks to dip in the paper mache mixture and start paper macheing your mask. When dipping your strips of paper, you will want to soak them thoroughly but have no excess paper mache mixture on it before applying it. You will want an even base layer that covers all of the poster board. Once you're finished covering your poster board in paper mache, you must let it dry thoroughly before adding any additional layers. We decided to add a second layer on our poster board to add to the hardness of the mask. 
Let your mask dry in a place with direct sunlight, a fan, or for speedy drying, you could dry it in the oven at 175 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes at a time. This is what our dry masks look like. You can trim the edges of the mask using scissors. Next, we're going to be making the horns for a Vigigante mask. I am rolling a rectangular piece of paper into a conical shape and securing it using tape. This will be the base for our horns. You can have as many horns as you'd like on your mask. Secure your horns on your mask using tape. I decided to go with three horns, one on top and two on each side. Then take your paper mache mixture and cover the entirety of the paperboard on the horns. For the horns, you'll want to have two layers of paper mache, but remember to let the layers dry thoroughly between applications. Once your mask is thoroughly dried again, you can start painting your mask with your acrylic paints. I decided to paint my mask using traditional Vejigante colors such as green, yellow, red, and black. Many Vejigante masks also feature dotted designs or paint splatter on them. So I tried to recreate this as well but you can choose whatever color you desire. That concludes the making of our Vejigante mask. Thank you for joining me to learn more about Vejigantes. For more videos, tune in to our Facebook page or our YouTube page at Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources. Bye!